As much as I want to help Jake and Chris, I just can't leave the tower unattended. If I do that, there's another 800 metres of the beach that's going to be unpatrolled. Chris learns one swimmer has managed to make it up the rocks to safety, though the same can't be said of his friend. Everyone was screaming at me on the rocks, and I'd gone past him. Every summer, huge storm cells sweep up from the south, bringing rain and gale force winds. The series of storms and tornadoes starting just before lunch hit with the most powerful wind gusts ever recorded in New South Wales. South of Bondi, a tornado has hit the beachside suburb of Kurnell. Scrap metal and debris whip through the air. This is the tornado that tore through Kurnell. It's mid-afternoon and two lifeguards, Jake and Chris, are patrolling the beach. Jesse is alone in the tower. The golden rule is never, ever, ever leave the tower unattended. We always need someone watching the water. Jesse spots a group of swimmers getting into trouble at the north end. The guy that's stuck out the back can actually swim. It's just this rip. He's uh, really, really strong. Yeah, boys, uh, he's going to have to go straight in. Chris and Jake have to rescue a girl and two guys. The thing that scared me the most was that it was such a short period swell, which means that the waves are constantly breaking after each other. So you don't really have time if you roll to get ready again, because the next wave's already going to hit you. Jake reaches the girl, but is pushed back. Chris makes it through to the other two swimmers, the teenager and an older man. Jake has the girl, but fights the waves. This is going to be the hardest thing now, getting them back in, because the rip's so strong, it's going to suck them out the back. Even if you're the best lifeguard in the world, if a three-foot wave hits you for patient on, you're falling off. As much as I want to help Jake and Chris, I just can't leave the tower unattended. If I do that, there's another 800 metres of the beach that's going to be unpatrolled. Chris gets his two patients to safety, but learns of a fourth swimmer in trouble. And then I've seen Chris grab another guy. Then, Jesse spots yet another person in trouble, a fifth swimmer further up the beach. Both available lifeguards can't be contacted in the water. What do I do, you know? I can't leave the tower. This guy out here, I just want to take my eyes off this guy out the back. Hey, hey. Jesse has to find a solution to his dilemma, or this man could drown. And then, out of nowhere, I just thought, you know, hoppo's across the road. Head lifeguard Hoppo is in his office just behind the tower in the Bondi Pavilion. Hey, uh, Hop, are you across the road, mate? I might uh, need someone just to come to the tower. I might need to go down and help the boys here. Hey, mate. I'll uh, pop it. Jesse has to cover 400 metres in the buggy. I was trying to start it, and I knew people were drowning, and it wouldn't start. And then all of a sudden, it just started, and I just pinned it, not even noticing how fast I got. Okay. Another one falling off the bank that Jesse's got gone in for. Moments before Jesse reaches the patient, a pair of experienced body surfers hold the swimmer up. These things happen. You get two or three go at the same time makes it a bit more difficult. All five swimmers are accounted for. <laughs> Thank you. 17 year olds Jai and Natasha are on holiday from Melbourne. Just too strong today. Yeah, it was just really rough, I think. It was, too rough today. Really yeah, good. a bit hard. And we're pretty confident swimmers, so thank God they were there. Though. That's awesome. <laughs> it is a good feeling when you save someone's life, but when you save someone's life and they come up and thank you, it's an even better feeling. Stormy seas aren't always bad news for lifeguards. As a lifeguard, you kind of, kind of, cheer it in in a way, you know, it sort of goes from rescuing people and on full alert to 
next minute you're all in the tower just watching everyone flee. It's kind of a sense of relief in a way. Often, when the surf gets big and blown out by wind, there's no one in the water for lifeguards to worry about. But then again, there's always someone who wants to test their luck in the big stuff. He's swimming. Yeah, we had a really dangerous beach setup. Conditions were terrible, and we had really strong winds, and the visibility was impossible. Groups of people on the walking track at Bondi have noticed two men caught in huge surf against the rocks. A couple of guys jumped in right in the boot, which is behind the icebergs there, and they were in difficulty. And as we all looked, we couldn't see anything. Oh, like a surfer? Then we just noticed a person run down the rocks and just try to throw a board to them. And that's when we knew that, you know, all hell's gonna break loose. The men are in a small bay beyond the beach. Two guys look like they're off the rocks over at the, behind the boot. It's too far to paddle and too close to rocks for a rescue board. Hello. Kerbox must unload the 400 kilogram jet ski just as a wave washes underneath. But the ski is dropped at the wrong moment. You get these really big surges that come, and then when it backs off, you get bogged with the jet ski. Bondi police call the tower for an ETA on the jet ski. Yeah, we're trying to get the ski out now. I've got all the phones ringing. Do you have eyes on them? Do you have eyes on them currently? Uh, we've had about a million phone calls for these guys at the back. We had eyes on them before, and they've just gone. They've gone out the back, and they're in a bit of trouble. Bondi lifeguards, Chris speaking. Yeah, sorry. I hate to be rude. We're super under the pump. We've got two guys out the very back of the uh, very back of the just trying to sort it out now with the jet ski. Go ahead. Yeah, boys, well, just had a call off the Rangers. Yeah, we're trying to get the ski. We're getting the ski to go get them right now. Finally, Kerbox gets the surge that he needs. It's all good, mate. We've got Kerbox halfway there now. Um, I've had the ambos, the cops, everyone calling. Chris learns one swimmer has managed to make it up the rocks to safety, though the same can't be said of his friend. You got eyes on him, yeah, Chris? We've got the, the one guy's coming off the rocks. And there's another guy out there. I'm just trying to locate him now. It's so hard to see there. There's white water everywhere. In pounding waves and gale force winds, Kerbox's search is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Centre of the box. There's one swimmer left, mate. Apparently he's with some surfers. Copy, mate. My visibility was zero. I couldn't see where I was going. I was mainly relying on all the people who were up on the cliff face try to get some kind of location. As I was going into the boot, I took my eye off on the surfer a couple of seconds, which was really stupid. And this set just loomed up, and it almost could have trapped me between the rocks and this wave. So I had to turn around and, and hightail it out of there. And then everyone was screaming at me on the rocks, and I'd gone past it. This is heavy. Two paramedics were there, and they were going back there, back there. And uh, I spun back around, and there he was. He had his hands up, screaming out for help. Yeah, King, King's got the last shimmer, boys. I know the boys are local kids, and it is pretty irresponsible. I don't think they really looked at what the surf was like before they decided to go in off the rocks there. They later told me that they do it all the time, and I have no doubt they probably do. But there's always that one chance that you can, you can come unstuck and. It could have been this day. Yeah, Boxy's just bringing one of them in now. So we're sorting it out. We've got all the swimmers. One's going there, but we've got the other. We're all sweet. Right. I knew they would get one of the boys to come out. And, yeah, Kerbox, lifesaver. Mid-afternoon. Huge seas and gale force winds have cleared the beach of people. Except for one man. Look, this guy's just stoked. He's just stoked. He's fully composing something, eh? And we were a little bit confused because he was throwing his arms out. It was like Thor or something. It was like some sort of god. People normally do that on a dance floor. It's just that he's doing it in front of the raw ocean. It's deep house, mate. It's just deep. Oh, he's finishing up. I'm calling that he's not done. I'm right. He's, he's coming back. You reckon with another trash? He had a look up here, didn't he? He's got more to offer this bloke. Oh, he's going back. I'm gonna find out what he's listening to. 
Yeah. Can you go down and find out what music he's listening to, please? But before you do, we'll have a little guess yeah. on what he's gonna. What is? I'm I'm calling genre of house. Yeah, it looks like his house job. We really didn't know because he was um just throwing out some more inspiring moves, and it had to be something good. What's he going, man? Let's get him up here. Let's oh, yeah. get him up here. Yeah. Yeah. Get him up here. Jamming, mate. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'll, go. I'll get him up okay. here. What better way to find out? And then go down and have a little dance with him and, and ask him, what is it? <laughs> so that's what I did. <laughs> what are you listening to, mate? Some DMX. Can I have a listen? Yeah. Oh, here he's got it on. He's putting the headphones on. Come on. 18-year-old traveller Jake is on holidays from London. And it looks like he's found a soulmate in Aussie lifeguard Jethro. So I had a chat with him and I was like, Jake, mate, the boys are wondering, you know, what you're listening to. Are you keen to come up and, and have a chat? They, they want to speak to you. And he's like, yeah, yeah. This is Jake. Yeah, Ledge. Uh, how are you? Uh, uh, how are you? Uh, how are you? Uh, fully. Uh, Wrong. No, I didn't realize there's so many people in there. What, what genre of music are you listening to? What are you listening to? Uh, you didn't know what you're listening some, to. Some sort of gangster rap. Is this in a DMX? DMX. Oh, yeah. Mouse just came out of nowhere and said, mate, do you rap? Can you rap? And we all looked at each other like, he can't rap. He's not a rapper. Uh, <laughs> British kid rapping city when I get through getting the devil, the people of Bondi rescue. Oh! But I'm drowning off a lifeguard oh, yeah. 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 They be right. acting crazy They go into the chat and up and they won't save me oh. When I go to the bottom of the seabed roll Then I go to a sea red Red lights flash up and I'm drowning Muscular flexing, get the death in The best in repping England, the UK Come through the dudes no. play on the beach UA, Jethro oh. yeah. That was awesome. That was Master Jay. Master Jay. Hey, uh, Jay, would you stop giving this, um, oh, yeah, this? Can I put it on your head? Yeah. yeah. Oh, can I now legally save people's lives? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was just one of those Bondi moments, you know, where something really strange happens out of nowhere. I feel like this could be a future. I feel like I should come down here, beef up a little bit, try and get a job as a lifeguard.